Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another basic introduction to Cavalry. And today we're going to look at how to create this indexed circle effect. So you see each circle in the array has its own number, index number, and that's being procedurally driven. So let's take a look at how it's done because we're going to learn some quite useful techniques along the way. OK, so here we are in a brand new scene. So file new scene if you want to create a new scene and you're in something else. And what we're going to do first of all is to create a background. So I'm going to do that by coming to the create menu here and select background. Or you'll notice the shortcut is command Y. That drops in this grey background. If we don't want it to be grey, we can come over to the Fill tab here for the background shape over in these controls. Click on that, click on the colour swatch, and then just drag the puck till we've got black, for example. So that's our black background. And then we want to create an ellipse. So over here is the Ellipse tool. If I hold down the Option key, and that's Alt on the Mac, and we click on that, it creates this grey ellipse or circle, I should say, in the middle of the canvas. And you'll notice it brought up its controls here. If we want to isolate the controls for anything, we can click here or rather hold down the option key, I should say, and double click here. And you can see that loads only the controls for the respective thing that we want to, control, to, to adjust. So in this case, I want to adjust the radius. I'm going to type 75 here in the width field. And then before I hit enter, I'm going to hold down the option key. And now I'm going to hit enter. And you can see we've got 75 for both the height and the width. So that's what the option key does in that context. Extremely useful key with lots of different uses. So we could just change up the color here by clicking on the fill tab, as you've seen before. But actually what I want to do is I want to fill it with a gradient. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's click here which brings up this search menu. Or you could use command full stop or command period, depending on where you live in the world. So that is the shortcut. Uh, but if you want to use the on-screen buttons, that's the button to press to bring up this search. As I said, we want a gradient. And I'm going to start typing the word gradient. And you can see that among the options is gradient shader. So I'm going to double click that to load it up. Option double click it to isolate its controls over here on the attribute editor. And I want to apply it to the ellipse. And I can do that using this here. So if I hover over that, you can see it says click and drag to start making a connection. So I can drag it to whatever I want. In this case, I want to drag it over the ellipse. I'm going to let go. And you can see I've got a sub menu here. It says fill shaders. And if I come across here, connect to new index, and click, you can see it's filled our ellipse with the gradient. And here's the gradient over here. And here's the gradient mode. And we don't want this linear mode. We want to choose from this menu radial gradient. And that gives us a typical radial gradient. We can swap the colors if we come to here and reverse stop positions. So now we've got the black on the outside and the white on the inside. I'm just going to click on the white and let's just move this around and maybe give it something like that. I think that's probably good enough. So now we've got this sort of dark circle here. Maybe I'll actually just adjust that black as well. Let's again come around here, just brighten it up a little bit. That's a little bit more fun, isn't it? I'm just going to drag that over the ellipse. And you can see that that's kind of created this child parent relationship. Just makes a little bit everything a little bit tidier. That gradient obviously belongs to that ellipse. And visually, it's better if they're kind of nested like that. So we also want some text to sit inside that circle to create our number array. So here's the text tool. Again, I'm going to hold down the option key and click on that. And that brings us up the default text here. Uh, let's first of all come down to the font size, set that to 100. Let's click on the horizontal alignment to set it to the center and the vertical alignment also to the center. And I'm just going to make this black instead of regular. And I want to come over to the fill tab for the text shape. And let's just make this 
something like that. So it really stands out against our gradient. So if I option double click on the text shape, we get its controls isolated. You can see we've got the default word cavalry there, but we could have anything we wanted if we typed it into that text field. But we just don't want straight text. We want a text generator that can be driven by the index number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here where it says generator, click like that, and I'm going to select from the menu value. What it's now done is it's created this string generator. I'm just going to drop the text over the ellipse shape and also that string generator over there. Again, just in, in, in the interest of keeping everything tidy. So then I'm going to option double click on the string generator. We don't want this level of precision. We want zero for the precision and the padding. We want one. And what we want to do is we want to drive this number value from an index. So we need to make an index counter. And let's do that again from this menu here. So click on there. Let's start typing the word index. And you can see we've got index context. And that's the one we want. Double click on that to load it up. OK, let's nest that inside the ellipse shape for tidiness sake. So now we want to link this index context to the string generator. So actually, let's just double click on the string generator to isolate it over here. But what we can do is drag from here the index context and we can drag that onto the number field of the string generator and then let go. We're not going to see anything for now, but when we duplicate this ellipse, we are going to see that each instance of the ellipse takes on its index number. So let's just make a bit more space here and uh, let's just come up to here and with the ellipse selected, let's option click to create a duplicator. And you can see now we've got this grid. If I option scroll in that size just to bring them apart a bit, we've got each of the instances of our circle numbered with, with their actual index value. So we could, if we wanted to create a circle, come down to the distribution for the duplicator. Again, let's Option double click that so we can't see anything else over here, to only the duplicator controls. We could choose from the number of different options, as you can see, of arrangements, and we could choose circle and increase that count there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something much more fun, and that's to use math. So this one here, math distribution, like so. Just going to clear that expression field because it's remembered what I'd done the last time around. And I'm going to start typing an expression. So it's x colon equals and then cos, C-O-S, which is cosine, open brackets, i, which is the index, times 2 pi. So that's 2 pi, pi, you know what pi is, and then divided by count, close brackets, so count is this number here. So it's just referring to that number there, uh, just above it. And then what we need to do is enter a multiplier. So times, so that's asterisk 400, and then a semicolon. And you can see that's created an array on the x axis. So I'm going to copy that expression. I'm going to have a carriage return, paste it. And all we need to do here is we just need to adjust the values. So instead of x, we want y. And instead of cos, we want sine. So s, i, n. And you can see now that we've got our circle because that's how you use sine and cosine to create a circle. This 400, as I say, is just a multiplier to get us to a, a circle of this dimension. So if we wanted to increase the size, we could type 500 in there, and you'll notice that because I've got a different value in both, we've actually got an ellipse, but if I typed 500 for both, we'd get a, f a larger circle. I'm going to go back, to go back to 400, like that. So that's very nice. You can see that we've got our numbered circles in there. But one oddity here is that the number starts over here on the right-hand side. But what if we wanted it to start up here at 12 o'clock? So zero at 12 o'clock. Well, there's an easy way of doing that. And that's by coming back to the distribution menu for the duplicator here, where we chose math. And we're going to add an extra one. So we're going to click on this disclosure here. And we're going to come down and we're going to choose 
sort. And I want you to notice that now we've got sort at the top here and underneath it, we've got our original math distribution. And I also want to you to notice what has happened to our numbers. So instead of the zero being over here on the right, it's now here over on the left, but we still want it at the top. So to fix that, we're going to come to the mode and we're going to set that to vertical instead. And you can see the zero is now at the top. If we happen to want it down at the bottom, we could come to the reverse option here and just enable that checkbox. And now it's at the bottom. But as I say, we want it at 12 o'clock, so we'll leave that off. So this is pretty good. We're almost completely finished. But what if we wanted to rotate this? What would that look like? So our duplicator, we want to rotate our duplicator. So come to this Z rotation here. And if we rotate that, you'll notice that obviously the numbers start to look silly because they don't stay upright. So we're going to fix that by again making a connection. So we're going to connect this rotation, drag from there, and I'm going to drag all the way down here to the shape rotation on the duplicator, and then I'm going to let go. But what we need to do is we need to add an expression just to reverse that. So we're going to right click on the shape rotation, right click, add expression, and we're going to type times, which is asterisk minus one, enter. And now you can see that's done the job. So now the numbers are vertical, no matter how we scroll in this rotation field. So we're going to do one more thing, which is to animate this rotation procedurally. So we're going to right click on it and we're going to add behavior and then we're going to choose frame. And what frame does is it basically just counts up the frame numbers. So if I come to frame 100, for example, you can see we've got a rotation value of 100. Now, the only thing about that is that it goes backwards and I actually want it to go clockwise. So again, we can easily fix that. And you probably guessed, we're going to right click on here. We're going to add an expression and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to do times minus one, enter. And now if you run it, it's running clockwise. And that is the project. So we've learned quite a few useful things, I think, in there. And I hope that's been a good basic introduction to cavalry for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.